So you're running or working in a machine shop and you have a lot of pressure either coming from external salesmen or maybe even pressure coming from inside your shop, from guys on the floor, maybe from your management, to invest in more expensive tooling. When does it make sense to invest in this expensive tooling and when does it make more sense to stick to the more budget options? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving into that conversation, but before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we are going to be getting into the wild world of tooling. Um, I want to preface this with the fact that a lot of this is coming from a small job shop perspective. Um, if you work at a crazy aerospace place and you're doing stuff that goes to the moon, or you work at a extremely well-funded government uh, position, you know, one of those research labs, or you work, you know, in a massive production shop, this may not apply to you. This is kind of coming from a more small job shop perspective, but in any case, I think it's still an interesting conversation to have, and hopefully it is helpful. So to get to the crux, crux of the topic, we are looking at expensive premium tooling versus more budget options. And when I say budget options, I mean you know the less flashy, less expensive tooling. I don't necessarily mean $1,000 an ML versus $5 an ML, you know, we're not talking top of the line versus eBay, but we are talking, you know, the more premium options or the more specialized options versus the more general purpose, less, less expensive options. Um, also to kind of parse this conversation down, we're really going to be talking about consumables. So we're talking about cutting tools, um, you know, tool, uh, lathe threading tools, end mills, uh, insertable tooling holders, uh, inserts. We're talking about cutting tools, really, for this conversation, just to kind of try to narrow it down. The main difference between things like consumable tooling, you know, end mills and so on, versus things like machines or work holding, is that, you know, when it comes to a machine or work holding or tool holding, those are something that I think is always worth investing in right the first time. Let's put it this way, if I buy a machine, I'm not gonna put it on my floor for six months, say, hey, do you know what? I'm not a big fan of that. Let's call another rep in and try another machine here. The investment and the barrier to entry and the you know, opportunity cost on that is just way too high to play around with. Conversely, when it comes to tooling, you know, like I said before, these are consumables. It doesn't matter how nice you treat that end mill, whether you're using the right speeds and feeds, you have the right coolant for the job, um, you know, you're not abusing it. At some point, no matter how many times you regrind that end mill, it's gonna be done. It is a consumable, it's something you're gonna go through a lot of. So it makes a lot more sense to explore different options. And it's kind of funny, this always blows people's mind, especially who come from the woodworking world and start into machining or people are just getting into the trade. You know, this isn't a, an industry where you can buy a saw blade, and yeah, you have to replace saw blades, but a saw blade may last someone in the woodworking industry five years. Or they go and buy a set of router bits, and they may have to sharpen them once in a while for their wood router, but it lasts forever. In this industry, that is not the case. You're gonna be spending a lot of money on this, whether you're buying cheap or expensive, so it's worth looking into. One of the biggest issues, well, just to backtrack for a second here, Let's say for the sake of argument for this conversation, we're talking about expensive to cheaper tooling. Now, there is a huge spectrum out there. You can have five different expensive tooling brands. One can be amazing, one can be garbage, and two more can be okay. And when it comes to cheaper tools, likewise. But for the sake of this conversation, let's pretend that more expensive tools are higher quality, less expensive tools may be of less quality. You know, I don't think you should ever buy junk tools, but let's pretend that spectrum exists just on a line right now for the sake of this conversation, because otherwise, I mean, I feel like I'm already in the weeds, but we're gonna get even further in the weeds if that's the case. One of the biggest issues I see crop up there for shops, especially smaller shops, 
is either not investing in the premium expensive tooling when they need it and blowing a ton of money on you know, cycle times being way longer than they need to be or having to do three or four operations when they could do it in one or they're going through a ton of cheap end mills when they could be using two or three more expensive ones that are cheaper. That's one problem. Conversely, I see shops that maybe either don't know any better or maybe they have a lot of pride. I don't know what it is. But guys using super, super expensive tooling for job shoppy stuff. You know, people hogging, you know, a block of steel that doesn't need an expensive end mill with an expensive end mill and burning it up. I see both these things happening. So that's why it's important to kind of drill down on this conversation. So to really get into it, one of the huge complicating factors when it comes to budget versus expensive tooling is that it's extremely difficult to know whether a tool that costs two, three, four times as much as the cheap tool is going to give you two, three, four, ten times as much value production, tool life, and all the things that go into making that a premium tool. From my own experience, we have had so many brands in here over the years. You know, so many expensive brands, so many cheaper brands, so many middle of the road brands. But especially with the more premium end, we've done tool tests for these companies over the years, you know, over the last 13 years I've been here. We've brought in stuff that on paper should have revolutionized the way we machine. You know, it should have cut our cycle times in half. It should have you know, had put one end mill in on Monday and that thing's gonna last for four weeks. On paper, these things should have been amazing. When we've used them in practice in a tool test, we haven't got the value out of it that was promised. Now, you can't fault the tooling companies for this because when they have their results, you know, from their in-the-lab tool tests, that's not always what's going on on the floor. Are you using the right type of coolant? Are your... Uh, ball screws in your machines rigid enough to handle the kind of force it needs? Do you have a fast enough spindle? Um, do you have CAM software that can process the kind of tool paths that are going to make this kind of tooling really work? Do you have air blasts on your machine for high feed mills to be able to get that effect out of the coating on some of these things? All these things go into whether a tool, whether it's expensive or cheap, is going to perform well. So, you know, just buying an off-the-shelf expensive tool, slapping it in your machine and running it the way you would a cheaper tool isn't always the answer. On the other hand, we have had expensive tooling that we've brought in. You know, we'll try the premium brand. Hey, listen, we use a lot of this tool. Let's try the cream of the crop. And while it's expensive and we don't want to use it every day, we've seen, you know, especially for some applications, that kind of tooling honestly cut our cycle times in half. We've seen it you know, get better finishes, better results, shorter cycle times. So you never really know what you're going to get until you give it a shot. So when it comes to go, going on the cheaper side of tooling or the more expensive side, there are a few main points that I consider. And this is, again, this is very personal experience. You're probably going to have a different experience. But this is just what I think. Firstly, the first thing I consider is is this a tool that I'm going to use again outside of this job? So let's say I have a one-off part that I need to do for a customer. It has one little feature that I need a special key seat cutter for. Or I need a reduced neck end mill. Or I need an extra long reach um, end mill with a high polish, whatever it is. A very specialized tool that I'm probably not going to use again. In my experience, I would rather buy three of a cheaper version than one of a premium version. The reasoning behind that's kind of twofold. The first reason why I want to buy a two of the cheaper one or three of the cheaper one than one of the expensive one is that I'm probably not going to use this again. I would rather have a few options on the, on the shelf you know, for the same price should this job crop up again rather than buying the expensive one, potentially burning it out. Not a great reason, but it's kind of the way my thought process works. The second reason is, at the end of the day, guys, Things happen when you're using tooling. I can't tell you how many times I've seen or I have done myself. I put an ML in, brand new, and on the first pass, for no reason, it breaks. Or I'm walking to a machine and someone's not paying attention, they bump into me, I drop it, knocks a flute off. Or the Z depth was set wrong and all of a sudden it crashes into the table. These are not things that should happen every day in a machine shop, period. Um, you know, if this happens every day, this is a problem. But these are things that do happen. 
if you buy that big expensive tool, the one for a one-off job, unless, you know, again, this is not aerospace stuff, this is not defense stuff, this is bread and butter job shop machining. If I break it on the first one, well, now I'm buying another one. Or if I break it because I'm not paying attention and I knock a tooth off, now I'm buying another one. I would rather have two or even three kicks at the can to get that one part done and out the door for the same price than have one shot at it with an expensive tool. You know, I would just price that job that I'm not gonna have premium performance and cycle time on that one-off part. Again, you guys can tear me to shreds on this. I accept it. Uh, this is just the way my brain works. You may have a different opinion on that. That's okay. Another situation would be, is this a general purpose tool that we use a lot of in the shop? Or is this, well, I guess that's the question. Is this a general purpose tool that we use a lot of in the shop? You know, we use a ton of half inch diameter solid carbide four fluid end mills. Typically in the one inch, you know, five eighths to one, eighth, one inch length of cut with a weld-in flat. We use those all day, every day here for a lot of our stuff. Um, just kind of the kind of work we do. When it comes to looking at a tool like that, I haven't personally found the premium end of tooling to have such amazing results that I'm gonna buy the same amount of tooling for that role, I guess is a good way to put it, as I would for the more budget end of things. Now again, we're not buying garbage, we're just not buying super high end for our daily drivers. That said, I think it's extremely important to keep an open mind when it comes to that. We are constantly looking. I mean, we use these, these half inch end mills all day, every day. That doesn't mean that I pick a budget brand, we're gonna run them all day, every day, this is what we do, go away salesman. That's not the case at all. What we do instead is we buy what we have here and is working for us and what we like, but we are constantly looking at different options. You know, we know the way a half inch end mill with our programs performs. We can slap another brand's tooling in there real easily run it and be able to tell, is the cycle time better? Can I push it harder? You know, all the things that go into making a better tool a better tool, and we have a good benchmark against it. We haven't found one that we like better, but we have a few brands that we like for those that tend to be kind of on the more budget end of things. So if you use a lot of something, find something you like that is working to be able to have a benchmark to test the premium tooling out against. Because if you find a premium tooling that shaves 10% off your cycle times in that role, or that you get 25% better, better uh, tool life out of, if you use that tool every day, that's a lot of money saved. So you can't get complacent. It's a bit of a tricky one, but that's kind of the scenario I look at there. The last one is, if I'm buying tooling for a job where something is critical or you know large, so either we're removing a ton of material from a ton of big blocks, or we're doing a huge production run of a thousand parts, or I get a contract where we're gonna be running this part in one machine for the rest of the year. That's when I think it's always worth putting in a lot of time and effort to find the best tooling. You know, one part, what's the max cycle time I'm gonna have on a part? Call it three hours, five hours, 10 hours. You shave off 10%, you save an hour. Well, let's say a job is running all year. If you can save 10% on time, get 10% higher output on a job that runs for 365 days a year, that's a huge savings. So in that case, it makes a lot of sense to put in weeks of looking at tooling, to bring in five different brands, to spend you know, $1,000, $2,000 on tools to test if your reps won't give them to you, to figure out what's gonna make the most sense. So in that case, I always recommend, you know, don't cheap out when there's a lot of room to make things better. In any case, guys, I'd love to know in the comments below, what's your thought process when it comes to, you know, budget versus expensive tooling? How do you decide, you know, have you found all premium brands to be the same? Is there a sleeper cheap brand that you love? You know, let us know in the comments below because this is how we can all help each other. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.